Hello guys, welcome back to another video. As you clearly can see we're out in the woods today. It's a bit sunny and it's mid-autumn. So the perfect place to shoot mushrooms you would think. But not today. Today we're going to take some creative portrait shots or some creative shots in nature in general. And as Halloween is approaching, this might be the perfect opportunity to take some creative Halloween shots as well. So without further ado, let's head into some B-roll. First shot, I'm standing here between some trees, it's a bit darker and moody today. For the first shot I will need my phone and I will use the flashlight to create a beautiful effect. So I'm gonna switch over to the GoPro and take that shot using my phone and my Nikon D3300 to take the photo. So guys, I hit the first location for my first creative shot. But I just discovered these mushrooms over here, so I'm gonna take a snap from these as well. And in the meantime, I will give you a little secret of mine. So whenever you hit this plus icon on your screen, on your um, camera, you basically digitally zoom in. So you can verify whether the subject you want to frame and focus on is in focus. That should do the trick. And that's sharp. As you clearly can see, the sun is coming from behind me, which is perfect light conditions for the creative shot I want to achieve. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stand over here. As you clearly can see, there are some trees over there. And I'm gonna try it in that direction as well, because this is a bit moodier in green tones. What I'm basically going to do is use my phone and stand with my back towards the lens. And basically what I'm going to do is switch on my flashlight of the phone and just point it towards me as if I'm looking through the woods to find something. And during the edit we're going to make this photo way darker than it actually is. Uh, and use only the light of the flashlight as a light source in the final image. In that way we're going to create a really moody effect. So without further ado, I'm gonna install everything I need for the shot. So what I did was <laughs> switched over my lens to manual focus. I will put on a soft timer of 10 seconds, giving me just enough time to go to the location I want to. And I did focus on one of the leaves over there. And that stick out. Okay, so I'm now going to run back and forth to get the right shot. Switching off my light. Alright guys, I just changed a few settings. And we're time to roll again. And there should be. I'm not in the center of the photo, although. And it's not as dark as I hoped for, but we're going to another forest where I might try is again guys what do you think about this the sun is really low already 
I'm just gonna check whether this forest, oh, this pot is so muddy. I'm gonna take a, a different pot with this part of the forest. Might be perfect to shoot that creative shot with a flashlight. And I think this is the location I will carry out my idea. I'm just gonna check uh, how dense it becomes. Uh, what I did now was focus on the tree with the autofocus, and I now flipped over the switch to manual focus, so it's still in focus because I pushed in the shutter button half. I switched to self timer. I know. I need to hurry up. And I hope this will be good from the first attempt. I'm stuck. Okay. I did focus on the wrong tree. But I'm gonna try it with a different camera. I will use my GoPro now. So guys, as I'm currently encountering some problems by using my camera uh, without a tripod, I just decided to switch over to the GoPro and take the shots with my GoPro and put it in burst mode. Well, use this little tripod and mount my GoPro to that one and uh, basically one benefit of using the GoPro is that it has a high aperture and everything will be in focus so that way we will avoid that as well because I cannot record the creation of this uh, photo I will just show you what I did I switched over my GoPro to burst mode and I will basically take the shot in linear mode because otherwise I need to play too much in post with the lens corrections and I wanted to take um, 10 photos over a time span of 3 seconds so that's about it all other settings I use Protune and, and a flat color profile because this gives me the best liberty to edit everything later on. So I'm gonna jump over this lock. And this hit the button. All right, guys, just tried out this effect by using my GoPro camera, and the shots are so dope. This is something what I should have done way earlier before struggling with my Nikon camera that's one disadvantage of going out on yourself but there's always a workaround to play with your gear as the sun just disappeared behind the clouds um, I decided to take my second photo I wanted to take here as well and for that one um, yeah, it won't mean a lot when you just see it because I'm just gonna use my selfie camera of my smartphone. Um, but during the edit, I will transform myself in the Witcher. Basically, I will change the color of my eyes during the edit and give myself some scars, which is a special photo for Halloween this year. So to make that shot, I will just put my uh, GoPro here and use that tree in the composition so what I'm gonna do is jump over this log again switch over
it's just important guys to focus on your eye to make that sharp and one more thing it's important to look to the lens and not look up next to the lens Okay, and that's about it. Okay guys, there's just one last creative shot I wanted to try. It's basically uh, inspired by Harry Potter, uh, or Fantastic Beasts, or just the wizarding world. And what I'm gonna do is um, pick up a branch from the ground here. Uh, and with a branch, I'm gonna simulate I'm holding a wizard staff. And with that wizard stuff we will create some magic in photoshop later and add it so without further ado uh, i'm gonna search a decent and not too large uh, branch and i will take a few photos by using my gopro again So guys, I just found this perfect branch, it's a bit large for uh, wizard stuff, but it will be perfect for making this photo happen. So I'm gonna stand over there, and I hope my GoPro will capture all magic. So guys, we're heading back home. It's still a decent walk from here, but I think we got enough of material to finish up this video outside. So, see you back in the office. Bye! So guys, I'm finally back in the office, it's a few days later and I just finished my last edit of these three photos. To keep this video short, I'm only going to show you some highlights of the edits and in case you're interested, I suggest you let it know down in the comments below, so I might turn that into a separate video. Just let me know down in the comments below. So. To prove you that you don't need any expensive software to create these photos, I used GIMP Darktable as free open source alternative programs to respectively uh, Photoshop and Lightroom. So the first photo with the torch, basically what this involves is playing around with some gradient filters. I used gradient filters to introduce some fog in the photo and I used gradient filters to play with darkness so I brought the foreground element and the green tones I desaturated them and made, made them way darker way moodier and the background was a bit overexposed and I used that in my advantage to create some fog and then the point of using the flashlight is a yeah, basically a light source and I turned that into an orange light source by using a radial filters and gradient filters in general. All approaches using either GIMP or Darktable or Adobe Lightroom are the same way. So decreasing the green tones, making it more moody, playing around with haze and uh, create contrast and the light source is always a gradient filter. So on to the next photo, which is basically the Witcher edit. That edit took me about one hour using both Photoshop and Lightroom. And what I basically did was create a moody shot. I first tried to use the back original background, but I ended up to use some gradient filters and um, some painting uh, with a, just a general soft brush. And I basically hid it completely because I didn't like it. It was way too busy as a background for the photo I wanted to achieve. 
Apart from playing around with some uh, gradient filters, um, the highlights of this photo are basically some dodge and burning and I used curves for that and I always invert my curve so I overexpose for the highlights and I underexpose for the darks. I invert my mask and then I use a soft white brush to paint in the darks and highlights on the places I want them to be. And then I did play around with the eye, I changed the eye's color and I did that by using just a hue saturation filter and again by applying the same effect as with the highlights and the contrasts, I inverted the mask and painted in orange where I needed it to be. Uh, now this car was a bit more tricky but it's basically a similar approach as with the eyes, you just need to play and um, use a bunch of layers. So that's it for the Witcher edit. And then my final edit, which was the most fun in my opinion to edit, was basically the simple uh, photo of me holding a branch in the forest. Now, in my opinion, the background was a bit too busy as well, there were way too many trees. It would have been better if there was a bit more fog as well. And what I first did was some color grading in Lightroom. I did two edits, one uh, without color grading in Lightroom first and one with. And then I opened up the photo in Photoshop as well. And what I basically did was use the pen tool and I, uh, I drew a, a spiral coming from the uh, wizard's wand. To the foreground and I basically used that as a guideline to paint in some clouds. That cloud brush is from a Flurn uh, channel, I will uh, post a link up here. Uh, and I just played with the curves and some toning as well. And that's basically how I achieved both uh, of these three edits. Now I'm going to show you all variations of these edits. Uh, if you like them, just let me know down in the comments below. And in case you want to see a full behind the scenes video, just let it know down in the comments below as well. So I think I'm at the end of this video. Then only thing that trusts me to say is, as you clearly can see, you don't need any expensive software to create these edits. Some of them are just made using all free software packages as well. And so I suggest you just need to start and remember that you don't need to be great to start but you need to start to become great and that's the code of this video. So without further ado if you like this video hit the thumbs up and if you didn't already subscribe and I see you in the next video. Bye!